Welcome back, Shalligators. Well, today, God, we are unpacking the drama between Britney Spears and her teenage sons, Jaden and Preston. And what the fuck's going on there? Because Britney, prepare, hold on, prepare to be shocked. You might need to walk around the room with your arms above your head and like shaking your fingers so you can catch your breath after you hear what I'm about to say. Britney has actually not been responding very maturely. <sighs> Do they even have a paper bag I can blow into? I'm just so shocked. I really just didn't see that coming from a woman who posts her labia on the internet. I just didn't see that coming. Can you tell which side of this fiasco I'm on? I'm team sons. And we're going to talk not just about the Britney mess and her demented fandom and why they're actually enabling her to have yet another psychotic break or worse, another child that she can't take care of. We're going to talk about what to do about our own difficult mothers. I'm gonna to read to you something that somebody submitted to a Psychology Today expert. I'm gonna read it like verbatim because I think it's really like encapsulative, is that a word? It encapsulates a dynamic so many, so many of us feel, which is like, I love my mother, but I hate her. And she's not the only celebrity in the news dealing with mama drama. Well, Britney is the mama drama, but Jeanette McCurdy has been doing her book tour. I don't know, she was in what, iCarly or something? That was never really my vibe. But she wrote a book called I'm glad my mom is dead, Ugh. but holy shit, dude. Ugh. I'm glad her mom is dead. I mean, I the, when she recently shared an email on a, a podcast, an email that her mom had written her, and it's also in the book, and it is blisteringly horrifying. Like, I am very rarely, like, jaw open. That is so awful, unless I'm looking at, like, college girl fashion. You know what I'm saying. The, the tube tops and the high-waisted pleated acid wash jeans. They're not helping you, Hannah. Mackenzie, take those off. I don't... Anyway. It seems like there's a lot of mom shit going on and it's not Mother's Day. It's the end of the summer, but still we're going to dismantle this and we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to deal with this. And if nothing else, a pep talk, because sometimes... We don't really have a tidy little answer for something. All we can do is kind of be there for each other in terms of this issue and give each other a big hug and let us all know, fuck man, we're doing the best we can and science supports us. But before we get into it, speaking of love and hugs and helping and being there for one another, one of our own, a shalligator named Jerry Beth Silva is in Venezuela and she goes into her own pocket and honestly a lot of debt to rescue dogs and cats off the street. And if you follow her on Instagram, Jerry Beth Silva, you can see that she doesn't just help animals. She goes around to her community and she brings food for people like this one old lady who is like mentally handicapped and she has all these cats and she has no food for herself. And so Jerry Beth just really like has this huge big heart and Venezuela is not doing well. Their inflation rate is over 2000%, 2000%. So if you want to sit here and bitch about how shitty America is, I don't know, maybe buy a plane ticket to Venezuela. After we help Jerry Beth, we can actually crowdsource a ticket for you. Bye. So listen, if you have five or ten dollars to donate, it truly goes such a long way. It makes a big difference down there to help Jerry Beth rescue these animals, get them the medical attention they need because, I mean, it's, they really need it. And I know with giving, it can just seem so overwhelming, like nothing we do matters, but it matters to that dog and it matters to that cat and we can be that blessing. So that's really cool. Speaking of different kinds of blessings, the sexual kind, if you guys missed my Alpha Academy Sexy Session tutorials, that's okay. You guys can access all of them on the Shalantourage. It, ooh, do you love my voice crack? Oh, join me, I'm about sex, I'm sexual. Sorry, <laughs> like let's listen to this chick. But you can join them on the Shalantourage. It's sort of our cozy little corner of the internet, our little like, not fan club, but it's just our little clubhouse where you're gonna get exclusive videos from me, daily texts from me, you're on some Telegram chats with me, and like I said, access to all of our sexy session tutorials forever. You can watch the episodes on kissing, hand jobs, blow jobs, sex, how to be sexy, kinks and fetishes, plus Q&A after parties for all of those that give you even more bonus info. So go ahead and click the link below and sign up for that. And one last thing, you guys. We have three spots that just opened up for our second Italy trip this October. At the end of Italy, I am taking a group of my baby girls all around Italy to my favorite places, Rome, Tuscany, Florence. You guys know I'm Italian. I'm super into Italian history. I speak Italian. I lived in Italy 
for periods of my life and to be able to share that with you guys is like the most special thing. I'm so excited we're bringing a professional photographer. It's gonna be fantastic. So go ahead and click down below and sign up. There's only one more week to book these spots and when they're gone, they're gone. And a new trip is launching next week. Where could it be? Where could it be? I don't know. But it's very different than the Italy. Very, very different. Okay. What the fuck's going on with Brittany? Do you guys like my hair? I just got it done. Thank you. Y'all know. I have not exactly been Team Brittany. Because call me crazy. She's not a well person. She is not of sound mind. How do we know this? 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 Because listen, we all watched the documentaries about her conservatorship and it seemed draconian at best. It seemed at worst like a, like a hostage situation. I mean, like she was being held captive by her evil overlord. He's like a fucking Disney villain. Her dad, Jamie Spears, who was, and I've done a video going into way more um, detail about this based on the sources I have, who is somebody who is very, very close to Britney. And I shared that. So um, go ahead and check that video out. But the long story short is like, she always wanted to get her kids back. Allegedly. I mean, this is coming from this source, this Britney, this pro Britney source. Okay. And I, I, I add a caveat to that. I put a little asterisk next to that. Because Brittany always wanted to get her kids back. She just wanted to live a normal life. She was being so controlled and hold, held underwater and blah, blah, blah. What's different about her life now? Does she post anything on Instagram that's different? No, I'm still seeing her vagina on the internet, right? Like just her standing there naked with things with like emojis over her nipples and her pussy. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that vulgar? It's actually vulgar to look at. Thank you. Um, so that, so that hasn't changed. So when, if we're talking about censorship, I'm a little confused about what was being censored. Um, has her personal life changed? No, she had the same, she had a boyfriend then. I don't have a boyfriend. And now that's her husband. So, okay. That's not different. Did she move houses? No. Oh, I bet she travels a bunch now. No, she still goes to Hawaii, like, you know, once a year, that's like her thing. Oh, well, I bet she's released a lot of new music and she's touring. Mm. Oh, okay, then she is doing some sort of big advocacy. I mean, of course, she's probably doing some huge advocacy for people, I don't know, under conservatorships. Bipolar people, um, women who like to show their labia on the internet. I don't know. Literally one sector of the population she is standing up for. Oh, she's not. She hasn't started a foundation. No. So tell me again why that situation was so untenable. To me, the only thing that's changed is she's made a catastrophic financial decision in marrying that obvious grifter, Sam Asgari. And also not really understanding if she's pregnant or not. I'm sorry, this Britney miscarriage thing, like I don't think she was ever pregnant. I think she was just very confused. I don't think she's uh, like bad, but I don't think she is all there to know if she is pregnant. Sorry, that's just my opinion, okay? So listen, maybe, So the only thing that's changed is something that is very likely not in her best interest. But everyone who is putting her in that conservatorship, and listen, I'm not saying that conservatorship was smart. Like, wasn't she, there was that report that she was paying like the trustee, that chick, like $300,000 a year to manage her money that she didn't have access to. Okay, like that's fucking shady. But two things, can exist at the same time. You can have a shady ass business manager and you can have a shady ass conservator and you can still be incredibly mentally unwell. And we do not like to accept this in society. People talk, I, there's just stigma about mental health. Is there? I feel like people won't shut the fuck up about it. It's like miscarriages, like there is a stigma. There literally isn't. There literally is not. Who is this, like the Tudor dynasty? No one blames a woman for having a miscarriage. It's 2022 for God's sakes. We actually don't need to reorient our entire Instagram around this when we have a miscarriage. I, I mean, am I alone on this? 
I don't think anyone's brave for speaking out about it. If it makes you feel better, that's fine. But please don't self-aggrandize that like this is so revolutionary. Is it? Not at this point, no. What I think has happened with this mental illness thing, oh, there's a stigma. There's a stigma that if you have anxiety or bipolar or whatever, or you're on medication, you are automatically a good person. And you're not. You're not automatically a good person if you're in a wheelchair or if you're black or if you're a Republican or if you're a Democrat or if you're a left-handed YouTuber named Shallon Lester. There can be a lot of people within those categories who are absolute fucking twats, okay? And we are not a lot, shh, 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 shh. You can be trans and a complete monster. Oh, whoa. And in fact, monstrous people kind of know that they can play certain cards and it's like a get out of monster free. So when people defend Britney, it's like, she's mentally ill. <laughs> Leave her alone. No. No. From my point of view, Brittany is absolutely no different now that she's free than she was under the conservatorship. I mean, she doesn't seem to be having any sort of like relevant emotional or psychological breakthroughs. Hence, I don't believe she's in like a ton of therapy with like someone who could actually genuinely help her. You know, in fact, she is, her party line is that she never needed any help. Have you ever heard Britney say, I was not in a good place? I mean, listen, maybe she has. I don't index everything this idiot has ever said. Sorry. I, but I feel like I keep pretty up on this and I've never heard her say like, oh, I should have been in the psych ward. I wasn't okay. I have a mental illness and I need medication and I need therapy, but I didn't need someone X, Y, Z, right? She won't cop to that. It was, I was fine. I was an innocent victim. There was, I was, I was the victim. She was a victim. She was not the only victim. The victims in this were those sons of hers. First and foremost, because they have a white man who thinks he's black, backup dancer as a father. Okay, we can all just agree on that. If you are Kevin Federline's child, you are already victimized enough by the world. And... I'm sorry, for Brittany to act like she is the only person in this entire scenario who has had the rug pulled out from under them. Like, remember how she came out against her sister, Jamie Lynn, when Jamie Lynn was like, I was not even a person in that household. Like, I was already the oops baby, and then Brittany was the superstar, and I was like short and dumpy, and did she say that? I'm sorry if she didn't. Perhaps I am editorializing a little. But like, you know, then Brittany's mentally ill, and Brittany... There was, there was nothing in there in Britney's response. It was like, Jamie, like, I get that you felt like the forgotten sister. Like, I get that. You were 16 and pregnant. You had your hands full. I get that you couldn't drop your entire life and come help me. No, it was the opposite. It was, fuck you for not dropping your entire life and coming to help me. Jamie had her own family. She was a mother. Her, her focus was on her children, not on her sister. But to Brittany, everyone's focus needs to be on her. Her sister, her mother, her father, her friends, and most importantly, her own children. Those children have an agenda. And the agenda saved Brittany. So I want you to keep that in mind. This kid is 15 years old. And he has had a hell of a life. Like, like I said, you know, backup dancer as, as a father. So this is an excerpt, and Jaden is 15, and he's talking about his brother Preston, Sean Preston, but I guess he goes by Preston, um, who's 16. I think mom has struggled giving us both attention and showing us equal love. I don't think she showed enough to Preston, and I feel really bad for that. We've both been through so much pressure in the past that this is our safe space now to process all the emotional trauma we've been through, to heal, heal our mental state. It's just going to take a lot of time and effort. I just want her to get better mentally. When she gets better, I really want to see her again. That hurts my heart. That hurts my heart. That a 15-year-old boy, first of all, is that eloquent in describing what is probably the most painful thing any of us can go through is a parent who rejects you. Because remember, Brittany hasn't seen her son in six months. Mm, how long has she been free? Longer than that. But again, her priority was like, doing her twirls, like letting her teeth rot out of her face, all messed out, doing her twirls in her Betsy Johnson clearance rack outfits and marrying this dude, not seeing her sons. 
but she's the victim. She's, she's the victim. So Brittany had some things to say about this. Okay. She shared a voice memo on Instagram. Jaden, as you undermine my behavior, just like my whole family always has, hope she gets better. I will pray for her. Pray for what? I keep working so I can pay off my mom's legal fees in her house. Do you guys want me to get better so I can continue to give your dad $40,000 a month? Or is the reason behind you guys deciding to be hateful is because it's actually over in two years and you don't get anything. Brittany told Jaden via Instagram that she needs unconditional love and support from her family, not disparaging comments about her mental state. Again, to say that a sick person is sick is not disparaging. If I say that someone in a wheelchair is handicapped, you are being so disparaging. No, I'm using my eyeballs, okay? I am accurately deducing this person is, has a difficulty that there's something that they're dealing with. The fact that Brittany cannot even, even acknowledge, okay, like, yeah, I've got some things to deal with. I've got some... I am bipolar. Like, it's not a shameful thing to be bipolar. It is a fucking shameful thing. If you have two kids, you're ruining because you won't go on medication and face it. Fuck you. Fuck you. Sorry, I'm not team you. Now, all the pity, all the empathy oh, that I might have for you, gone. Th all that pity has now shifted to those children who did not ask for this. Did not ask for this. And if, if there's nothing else you could do, Shut your fucking mouth about how you think you're somehow the victim. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me with this? Makes my blood boil. She wants unconditional love and support. The term unconditional love makes my skin crawl. Do you know who unconditional love is for? Pets. It's for dogs. It's for cats. Maybe even a parakeet here or there. Because they truly do love you without condition. You're ugly. You're stupid. You're racist. They're like, hi, I'm so glad you're alive. They are psyched. That is who deserves our unconditional love. My love? Oh, it comes with all sorts of conditions. Many strings attached. Many strings attached. And that is for everyone. Now, granted, there's fewer strings attached for, say, my mom, who I love. Like, I love my mother. I adore her. She's my best friend. So listen, as we go through this video, I understand. I can, I can not, I'm, I have not walked a mile in your shoes if you're having mom issues. Like, I, and I am so sorry. Got plenty of issues with my dad though. So I am with you on that. There's less strings attached for her. Our relationship is far more elastic, but like, no, even her, if I found out she was stealing money from me or she like tried to sleep with my husband, I mean, there, these things happen, you know, like, uh, no, like there would be that baseline of love, but mm -mm, no. And people like Brittany, they use this term unconditional love which is, again, what do we always say? Toxic people take our best quality and they turn it into our worst. They take this wonderful, magical ability we might have to bond or earn or achieve or whatever it might be, and they turn it into a target right on our forehead. They use it against us. So the fact that she, she says she needs and uh, ostensibly deserves unconditional love and yet, what, what is her response? Hateful comments. Implications that these boys are just using her for money. Really. It saddens me not one of you have valued me as a person. You've witnessed how my family has been to me and that's all you know. Like I said, I feel like you all secretly like to say something's wrong with me. It's not a secret, Brett. We're saying it right out in the open. Something is wrong with you. And that's... Okay, something can be unwrong with you, you can work to fix it, but you can't change what you don't acknowledge. I see not one shred of accountability from Brittany. One of my besties the other day said something because I'm in a fight with the guy that I'm dating, of course. We're not speaking at the moment. And she's like, he expects more from you. Oops, my alarm, sorry. She's like, he expects more from you than he expects from himself. I was like, oh my God, I wrote it in notes in my phone. 
to like, it's like a bullet I've loaded into a gun to fire at him when we start talking again. You expect more from me than you expect from yourself. This is an underwater relationship. This is inverted. That is all I hear and everything Brittany says about everyone. To whom does she owe something? To whom is Brittany accountable? Not, if it's not her children, I've got news for you. It ain't nobody. It ain't nobody. And let's also say, let's also say, you want me to keep working so I can pay. What work have you been doing, Brittany? What is the last shred of work you have done in the last half a decade? What is it? Product endorsements? You, no, you don't do anything influencer related. No, you know, you don't do that. You don't tour. You don't put out new music. You don't sing private concerts. What the fuck would you say you do here? And yet the whole thing with your conservatorship is everybody wants your money. What money? I mean, of course, of course, of course, you're making all this money like from royalties. I get that, of course. But are you bringing in new money? How? So you can't have it both ways. You can't say they've controlled me and I can't do anything and yet I can't stop working. It's, which is it? You ha either have no life and you're in this like emotional vacuum, this like stimulus vacuum, or you're just this hamster on a wheel, which I feel like we would be able to see based on results. You have an Elton John song out. Oh, wow. I, listen, someone tell that sad man, no, just this ain't it. Ugh, I can't. Ugh. Brittany elaborated, you and your brother left me in that house always two hours early, like when she had visitation. Preston would sleep. You would play the piano the whole time. And if I didn't shower you guys with gifts and have amazing food ready and play a motherfucking saint, it was still never good enough. I call shenanigans. I call shenanigans on that. Here's why. Children are hardwired to love their parents. But parents are not hardwired to love their children back. Okay? We're hardwired to love our parents. It's a survival mechanism, right? Like mommy, mommy, mommy. She's got the food. She's got the shelter. Not in reverse. We hear all the time about animals abandoning their babies. We don't even need to look to the animal kingdom. We need to look to the New York City subway system. You ever... Go spend 20 minutes riding the subway through Brooklyn and look around and tell me how many happy parents you see. I would see tons of mothers who actively hated being a mom. They hated their children. It was heartbreaking. And honestly, it's one of the things that like kind of drove me out of New York. And I think, I also think a reason why, not why I haven't had kids or don't want kids, but it's, it's a data point. It's like, you know, people are like, oh, you'll love it once it's here. Will you? <laughs> take the train up uh, uptown a little bit, like take it downtown, take it all over the place. Like you're going to see a lot of people who hate their kids, who are so bedraggled, so put upon, such a burden. No. And the kids are like, mommy, it's not the kid's fault. So I have a real issue with Brittany acting like her kids are somehow, somehow in their early teens, totally rejecting of their parents. But hold on, hold on, hold on. You could say. You could say, Shallon, that's actually exactly when <laughs> kids reject their parents is in their teens. Okay. Okay. That's true. It is a parent's job to identify phases, to identify, okay, this is adolescence. Like it's natural for my kids to be kind of uninterested in hanging out with mom. Brittany doesn't do that. Brittany throws the baby out with the bathwater. Brittany looks at what is very possibly, let's say, let's say that Brittany's right, that these kids want literally nothing to do with her when, what, we could say that this is probably a year ago. She hasn't seen them in six months, right? Let's say that this was a year ago. They were in their early teens. If she were a capable parent, she'd be like, this is, this is being a teenager. This is teenness and it sucks. Okay. Like <laughs> she would not say, and fuck you all the way around. You're hateful. You don't value me. You don't treat me. A normal, healthy parent would be like, this is hurtful. It is. It's so hurtful. I can't imagine if I raise kids and they're like, you're stupid and embarrassing. Got it. You want to see what my nipples are like now? It, they're a nightmare and it's because of you. Okay. It would be hurtful, but I would also be like, listen, this is where they are. This is how the teenagers goes. Why boarding school was invented. Just get out of here. 
I would not cast these children as monsters from the beginning and forever because they are in a phase where their brains and their synapses are firing and rewiring and they're going through puberty and they're getting boners in the middle of the night. And they're like, what is this? Like I would, as a parent, understand that it's my job to have a little bit more grace and be a little less of a twat towards my own children who truly are hardwired to love me. And gee, have I been there as a cognitive, cognizant, whole 360 healthy, stable parent for them? No, I haven't. I don't understand why Brittany can't just say, I haven't been the best mom. And it's because of my mental health issues. It's not because I don't love them. It's not because I don't wish I could be a better mom, but I'm trying the best and I know that I haven't always been great. Never heard her say that. Never. Again, may maybe I've missed it, but based on what she's saying now, that really does not seem to be any place in her rhetoric. It is, as usual, everyone else is the perpetrator and I alone am the victim of this. Not my sons. I feel so bad for those kids. I, they seem like remarkably well adjusted. And I hope one day Brittany's like, ugh, I need to get my shit together. But honestly, she's been free for how long now? Not shit has changed. So I don't know. I don't know. Okay, that concludes my Brittany rant. Okay, so let's talk about Jeanette McCurdy. And she was on, yeah, I Carly. So Jeanette went to the Red Table Talk. Oh God, those. Here we fucking go. Okay. <clears throat> and she shared an email that her mom wrote to her. And she also shared it in her book, I'm Glad My Mom Died. This is, this is bad. I am so disappointed in you, her mom Debbie began. You used to be my perfect little angel, but now you are nothing more than a little slut, a floozy. And apparently these things are in all caps. She slammed the iCarly lum for being with a hideous ogre of a man, rubbing his disgusting hairy stomach. I don't know who that is, but she called Jeanette a conniving evil liar. She said, you look pudgier too. It's clear you're eating your guilt. Thinking of you with his ding dong inside of you makes me sick, sick. I raised you better than this. Where is my good little girl? Where did she go? And who is this monster that's replaced you? You're an ugly monster now. I told your brothers about you and they all said they disown you just like I do. We want nothing to do with you. P.S. Send money for a new fridge. Ours broke. I mean, to have that kind of disapproval from your parent is, I mean, it's crushing. I'm going to use the example I've used with you guys before. With my mom, the Tide Pods, the Tide Pods. My mother is incredibly, incredibly supportive. She doesn't always agree with everything I do. And in fact, she's probably, we're probably the furthest apart we've ever been just because our politics don't align anymore. And like we were talking the other day about like indoctrination, like, cause I know some people who've grown up in a cult. I know it's weird. And I'm like, I can't imagine like what it's like to be indoctrinated with some crazy belief. And I was like, well, I mean, I guess I kind of can. And she's like, what belief were you indoctrinated with? I said that all Republicans are evil. She said, no, that, no, I didn't. I said, okay, well, first of all, the indoctrinator will never admit it to the indoctrinatee. So like, no one's gonna be like, oh yes, oh yes, that's exactly what I, they'll say I instilled that within you. I instilled Christian values in you or whatever it might be. I instilled the rhetoric of blah, blah, blah but I, I didn't indoctrinate you. And I said, well, I mean, there was no room for questioning that. It was an absolute, and it was met with a lot of consequences if I disagreed with that, as I am experiencing today. So if we don't consider that indoctrination, I don't know what does fall under that purview. She's like, I never said Republicans were evil. I'm like you literally said it verbatim multiple times, like a jillion times as I was growing up, like my whole family did. That was, that was like, pardon the pun, the party line, like they were evil. And now I'm like, wait a minute. Some of them are, a lot of liberals are too. A lot of Republicans are like, but not all of them. And what? I digress, the Tide Pod things. One time my mom was visiting me and she's like, why are you using these Tide Pods? And I was like, I don't know. They're like, you just pop them in. She's like, yeah, but I can see like them in 
in the back of the washer. They don't like all, they don't fully open up. They're not, your clothes aren't getting clean. Don't do that. And she was very staunch about this. She's like, stop using these. Don't use these. And I was like, okay, I won't, I won't, I won't ever use them again. And brother, I never have. I truly, I realized this the other day when I was in Target, I don't even like to be in the aisle with them. I'm like, cause they're a touchstone of my mother not approving of me. And it's untenable that she doesn't approve of my decisions. And like I said, I've gotten super fucking lucky throughout my life. I've made some wild choices. I'm a pretty out there person. I'm like, oh, I'm doing a hand job tutorial. Aren't you proud? I mean, she saw how much money I made. Yes, she is. But like, she's always been like, <laughs> yay. Like she's always been super supportive. <laughs> These Tide Pods were the end of the line. And I was like, I say no more. Like I'm, I will never use these things ever again. I cannot imagine if she was casting judgment over the entirety of my life, one sector of my life, my body, my choices. Like, and listen, listen, I'm not, I should not say that she's just this, you know, rabid yay sayer. She's got a lot of opinions. But her opinions always come from, as I see it, a place of love, a place of thoughtfulness, and usually a place of logic and cause and effect. And she can reason out what she's saying very well. And I think that's why we've differed on the Republican Democrat thing, because her her reasoning is like, well, no, they're just bad. Like I was DMing oh, with this Republican politician. He's very well known, but he's very, very right, very right wing. And I mentioned to her, she's like, I fucking hate that guy. And she never swears. She's like, I hate him. I was like, why? She's like, because listen to his politics. I'm like, so, okay, you hate him because you disagree with him. And, but you're allowed to hate him. He's not allowed to hate you. Cause she's like, well, he, he hates people like me. I said, he actually doesn't. Like we, we've had like quite a few in-depth conversations. Like he's much more moderate than you think he is. You know, this, this super staunch thing, it's kind of a strategy. And we talked about that, but it's like, she cannot re she can't logically explain that to me, that rhetoric and, and that point of view. And so that's why I'm like, well, I, I'm sorry. I disagree. And I have a better shot of standing in my disagreement and Put and putting up a, like a, not a boundary, but you know, like standing up to her in a way in, in that opinion than I did with the Tide Pods. Cause I was like, oh, she's, not, she's not wrong. They're not really opening up and my clothes could be cleaner. And I cannot imagine if it was like, I hate your husband. I hate your job. You're fat. You're disgusting. To, I just, even saying those words out loud, like almost brings tears to my eyes. It's horrifying to conceptualize. And I know this is something so many of you guys have dealt with and are currently dealing with. So I wanna to read to you something that someone submitted to a doctor on psychology today, kind of like a Dear Abby thing. It's this chick, Barbara Greenberg, PhD. She calls herself the teen doctor. Bitch, I'm the motherfucking teen doctor. Okay, I'm gonna read it in its entirety. It's long, but I really feel like it hits on so many things that so many of you guys tell me. And truly, I hate getting questions from you guys about moms because I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. But let me say first, I don't know what it's like to have a shitty mom. I absolutely know what it's like to have a shitty dad. And that's why the concept of unconditional love is such bunk to me because like, no, I don't, I wouldn't say I loved my father at all. He wasn't in my life. He took no real, no, I mean, not no real interest, no interest period in mine. He didn't work to send us money. He didn't write me on my birthday. Like I was like, not a thing. And I also really can't say that I had love for my grandfather because kind of the same thing. My that was on my mom's side. It's like I was not really, I was just kind of an afterthought at best. And so I give those people exactly as much love and consideration as they gave me. I'm a very... I don't want to use the word petty or eye for an eye, but I think that that's rooted in my sense of like revenge and justice and equality, like true, actual equality. I'm cool to you until you're not cool to me. I won't start it, but I will fucking finish it. Like, because, hey, I look at people who are supposed to love me and they don't, and yet I'm supposed to love them. I'm supposed to pull up for them and, oh, I'm mourning. I mean, <laughs> no. And I think we all, as human beings, have the right to say one simple phrase. Fuck blood. <laughs> Fuck 
blood. Fuck blood. You're my blood relative. Fuck blood. You know the phrase, blood is thicker than water? People take that to mean, oh, like my blood, my blood relative is thicker than like somebody I just know. No, 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 no. You're getting that phrase wrong. Because what you're not hearing is the entirety of the phrase. The blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Huh? The blood of the covenant, covenant means a promise, okay? Is thicker than the water of the womb, the amniotic fluid, essentially who you came from. The blood of the covenant, this phrase came up after the crusades where people were fighting alongside each other. This is my blood brother. This is the, my brother in this covenant against this person, against that person, whatever. That is where that phrase came from. You are my brother because we are bonded in this covenant together. You have put your life in my hands and vice versa. You are closer to me and I trust you more than the person who I, in whose womb I was or who was in the womb with me. The blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. People knew back then. Yo, fuck blood. Just because you're related to me? First of all, I didn't choose that. You just, I just got here. I don't know who the hell are you. And you got, uh. We have the right to say, blood doesn't mean shit to me. You know who I don't like? My cousins. I mean, they're fine, but like, I don't, I feel more towards you guys than them because we're not the same. Maybe we share some ancestry. I really don't care. I don't care. If it's, I have to give a kidney to my best friend or my cousin, not a difficult choice, not a difficult choice. But we are taught as women, loyalty, loyalty, family, family above all things, family, family. No, no, not family. The blood of the covenant, the family you choose, the family as you decide to define it. I define family as people who lift me up. They're proud of me. They want me to do well. They want the best for me, which means sometimes they're going to push back. Tide pods. Sometimes they're going to say, you know what? I expect more from you than what you're doing. You need to expect more from you than what you're doing. Get off your ass. We're doing this. That's family to me. And then it got nothing to do with DNA. Nothing. So I want to read this. Okay. Dear Dr. G, I've gotten to the point in my life where I'm just completely done with my mom. She's been a negativity. Oh. She's been the negativity in my life. She keeps threatening to leave the family. And at this point, I don't care anymore because she uses it as a threat and it's getting old and annoying. She's very problematic in this household. She's so passive aggressive. She's always complaining about my sister and I not helping around the house. Yet all we do is clean for her all the time. My mom doesn't ever clean the house. She doesn't even work. She just complains all day long about how useless my sister and my dad and I are. I feel bad for my dad the most because he really is such a devoted father to me and my older sister. My mom makes it seem like he doesn't love us, but I truly know that he does. He even tells us he does, and I know all the time he doesn't ever want to break up the family. Yesterday, my mom was being very dramatic and name-calling all of us. She told my sister and I that we're never to call her mom again because we don't deserve to. I didn't care what she said that because, to be honest, I've given up on trying to be the daughter my mom wants us to be. Whenever we do... I'm sorry, whatever we do, it'll never be good enough for her. And I now just realized that. My mom was always telling people how amazing of daughters we are, but behind closed doors, we're stupid and useless to her. She's always telling us that she trusts us, but I know she doesn't. She's always thinking my sister and I are going to go do something beyond dumb by doing drugs, getting pregnant, or getting in trouble with the law. But I know that's not even possible. I know for a fact my sister and I are good daughters. We've never been out smoking or drinking or doing drugs. We're trapped in this house all the time. If we are to go out with friends, the longest we could stay out is like two hours because she thinks we're going to ruin our lives. I want her to trust us, but it'll never happen. Whenever we try to talk to her about things or our feelings, she doesn't listen. She turns things around to start talking about herself and start a pity party. Well, I don't fall for her pity party words because I feel like she uses it as an excuse to get away with a lot of things. Last night, she went out of line and said my father was a bad father and he was a bad husband. My dad is still by my mom's side even after she had an affair with some some other man for over eight years and she thought she could call him a bad husband? He's worked so hard for my family. My whole family wouldn't be living in this house if it wasn't for him. I hate the fact that my mom is always getting away with things. She's never going to change her behavior if everyone in the house continues to let her get away with stuff all the time. She acts like a teenage girl throwing fits when not getting their way. I'm the teenager in this house, and I don't even act like that. 
I said that if my mom ever decided to leave the family, I would never forgive her. I would make it seem as if I never even had a mother and I would never have her around when I got married or had children. She would not ever be around for the most important milestones in my life. Fuck, man. I would love to say that they published that as some sort of wild outlier. Oh, this is crazy. This never happens. They published it for the opposite reason. They published it because so many people are going through that exact same thing. Whether they're a teenager or not, the victimization of a narcissistic parent who is fundamentally unable to tune into their child or anyone else's emotions is all too common. We had one in my family. It was my grandmother. My grandmother and my mother. My God. I loved my grandmother. I got along with her. We were, we were much more eye to eye. I am kind of a narcissist. Maybe that's why. Like her behavior made more sense. I'll say it made more sense to me in a lot of ways. Like just just her personality made more sense. She was outgoing. She was like a Blanche Devereaux. She was vivacious. She was a little peacock. I mean, my mom is not like that. She's very low key. She's, I wouldn't say she's introverted or shy, but she's just not trying to ever be the center of attention like that. She's just different. And my grandmother resented my mother. She got the attention from my father. She got the attention from my grandmother's mom. Like she was, she took the attention away. And that for a narcissist is a capital crime, isn't it? Even if it's your own child. My grandmother, if you asked her to describe her life without asking for any actual concrete details, you would think she was like in a refugee camp. You'd think she was Nelson Mandela. And listen, I loved her. But I can look at her for, uh, I can divorce myself from the grandmother I loved and the human being that she is. And this is something we truly have to work towards as adults, to divorce ourselves from the person we loved and the aspects we loved and are hardwiring to love them. And be able to be like, I can see the writing on the wall and it is the most unnatural feeling. It really is. I know. We don't want to do that. It feels so deeply disturbing to say my mother has issues. My grandmother isn't perfect. Our family isn't perfect. And you know what? You know the reason I stand the Kardashians so hard is because they really made me feel okay about sticky situations in families. They did. Like, I grew up in a town where everyone was perfect and no one talked about anything and everybody's family was perfect. And, like, I had to present as perfect. I'm a fucking influencer. Like, hello? This had some long-lasting effects. And, like, the Kardashians, like, really made me feel okay with, like, oh, like... Families have issues and they're not pretty and they're weird and gross and like, you know, and I'm actually we're doing okay. <sighs> but when you have a narcissistic parent or someone in your family, truly calling them out is like not going to be helpful because like this girl said, like she turns it around and somehow she's the victim. Let's see, let's touch that back to Britney Spears. She's the victim. You can't say shit to her. You can't say shit about her. It has to be unconditional. You need to give me unconditional love. I need to be able to do whatever I want forever with impunity, absolute lifelong immunity from dickish behavior and bad parenting because I am the victim. You you actually can't step one toe out of line though. No, 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 this isn't gonna be reciprocal. This isn't gonna be equal. I despise inequality. I despise it. And I especially despise people who dress up their own victim narrative as a, as a cry for equality, which is why I hate the non-binary alphabet soup crowd because they can, you can't say a bad word about them. You can't come back with any sort of logical argument. You're, you're transphobic. You're a this, you're a racist, you're a sexist, you're whatever. You're a fucking ist, you're a whatever. That's not equality actually. So miss me with that. You might run that game on other people. You're not running it on me. Brittany's not running that game on me. And this poor teenager's mom ain't running it on any of us either. Let's hear what the doctor had to say. (sighs) I agree with you. It seems that your mother sets no limits for herself and that your father also has a difficult time doing so. I think that's interesting. Your mother sets no limits for herself. Oh, it's a bug. Sorry. It's a fly. When we think about people like Brittany, I guess, yeah, that is exactly what typifies her behavior. No limits. 
There's no limits to what she shares or doesn't share. I mean, she's got her vagina out. There's no limits to who she blames. Like, there seems to be no real rules of governance. And if there are some, they are not appropriate. They're not appropriate, right? They're not where they should be. I don't care who you are. You shouldn't be naked on the internet. I, I mean, you shouldn't. And, and still expect your children to have a positive relationship with you. Your teenage sons to want to be around you. Gee, could that have ever been a factor? That you're standing there naked and maybe your like tween sons are like horrified by you? Decisions have consequences. Perhaps your father doesn't know how to set limits or he too may be depleted like you are. Your mother sounds verbally abusive and demeaning towards her family. And it seems to me that the only, that only someone who is depressed and has other emotional problems would behave in such a manner. You know what? I don't really like this because now you're trying to cast her in a pitiful light. She's depressed. She doesn't sound depressed. She sounds awful. You can be a garden variety asshole. Do you know that? You can be just like a run of the mill shit bag. It's not always like clinical depression. You can literally just be a dick. I think it's underdiagnosed. From your perspective, you're doing your best to be a good daughter, but nonetheless, your, mo your mother is chipping away at your self-esteem and clearly doesn't trust you. Perhaps she's full of fear or anxiety. On the other hand, she may simply be, an ang she may simply be angry and punitive. Yeah, see, garden variety dick. She may even be drinking. Yeah. It would also be helpful to get your mother's perspective on how she sees things. Without her perspective, I'm going to do the best I can while helping you sort things out. I mean, I feel like we can see her perspective. She's the victim. You know what? I don't really need at this point in my life to see the shades of gray within someone's victim narrative. <laughs> I don't. I, re I, I don't. Maybe that's bad. Oh, are they delivering? <gasps> They're delivering all my dresses. Yes. Oh, here. Yeah. Come on, daddy. Come on, UPS. Oh, are you spitting on my lawn? That man spat. Drop my packages. Get the fuck off my property. Hold on. Fuck. What was I saying? Before the spit man. <sighs> anyway. I'm not interested in hearing the dirty details of someone's victim narrative. I, th I really think that just sort of emboldens them. You know, you, they get the joy of telling it again. They get to feel like a victim all over again. You get to, basically they get to run their game on someone new and fresh. Like, no. I'm sorry, because what justification do you have for treating your kids like that? I don't really want to know the logic behind it. It's not appropriate. I don't know that I want to know the logic behind pedophiles. Now, look, I mean, I know you could say like, we're never going to, we're, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. I did just say that earlier. I get that. So I could be remiss in saying this, but I am a very punchy person when it comes to people being shitty to their kids. Sorry, I'm not a doctor. I suggest, this is what the doctor, the actual doctor said, that you start out by having a heart to heart with your father. It's very important for you to get his perspective on what's going on. Ask for his support. Maybe he can assist and encourage your mother to get some help. Maybe they need to go see a therapist together. Involve your sister in this discussion if you think that's going to be helpful. Even if your mother does not go to therapy, it would be extremely helpful for you to seek individual therapy. You need and deserve someone to talk to, and this will take weight off your shoulders. You might not be able to change your mother, but you may be able to change your reactions to her. Your mom says she's going to run away. You may want to ignore these comments rather than respond to them and threaten to never talk to your mom if she leaves the family. Such comments are generally fueled by a reaction. This is the type of behavior a therapist will help you with. In therapy, you will learn a variety of coping skills to deal most effectively with the home situation. I don't find this very helpful. Talk to a therapist. You are a therapist. What are we doing here? It's like I take my car into the shop. Oh, you should take this to a mechanic. You are a motherfucking mechanic. What? A, what? Like, okay. Ignore the comments. I mean, uh, that's not necessarily the wrong advice. I've told you I have very strong feelings about people who play a suicide card. I'm gonna kill myself. First of all, no, you're not. Like, no, you're fucking not. If you're a narcissist, if you're doing it for attention, no, you're not. And second of all, if you are gonna do it, then do it. Like, skin it, skin that smoke wagon. Let's, let's go to work. What are you gonna do? Do not come here and hold me hostage 
weaponizing my love for you. And now it is the worst fucking thing about me. It is the worst decision I've made. The unconditional love. I don't care. So, I mean, there is something to be said for ignoring these comments or if you can't just like ignore it, being like, then leave mom, then leave. Like calling someone's bluff. I think that we in our lives, we have to come from a place of like psychology and empathy and all that, but also of war because there is a war going on. These people are waging war against us and ignoring it isn't always an effective strategy. But I do really agree with what that doctor said, that therapy is going to at least give you a toolbox to deal with people like this, you know? But again, fuck blood, man. Fuck blood. I think that one of the most effective things you can do to avoid this catastrophic ripple effect throughout your life is to acknowledge your parent is one with the problem. I, I've said this to my mom when she's talked about her friends and their kids, like, cause their kids are, you know, we've seen them grow up, I've grown up. And when she'll talk about like Linda's daughter, who's just so mean and she just won't talk to her. And then, and then we, Linda didn't do anything. I said, oh yes, she did. Oh yes, she did. Maybe not this week, maybe not last week, but at some point, there exactly is something Linda has done and probably not just one thing, probably years of some thing or things because we are hardwired to love them and you guys are not hardwired to love us back. Not for all that long, right? When parents and children have a chronically bad dynamic, sorry, it's the parents' fault. Hold up though, hold up. I can look at my mom and my grandmother and I can say that with absolute certainty. It was my grandmother's fault. My grandmother started the fire but my mom added the gasoline. That fire would be simmering out. My mom would be like, oh yeah? Brrr. She would pour gas on that fire. She would. She would take the bait. She would be reactive. She would be presumptive and presumptuous about what my grandmother's motives were for something that maybe actually for once were fairly benign. But my mom would be like ready to fight. And I was always in the middle trying to parse out what was real and what was not. So what I'm saying is, just because your parents started it does not mean you need to finish it. And I know, I know, I just talked about war and then I started, blah, blah, blah. I know. But what are you after? You want to talk about war? Let's talk about war. What are you after, peace or victory? I asked my mom that one time, what are you after here? Peace or victory? And she didn't really have an answer. And I understand why, and I don't blame her for it. It's very difficult. It's such a thorny issue, you know, moms and, and daughters. Any, any parents and children, you know, siblings. I said, then you got to choose. You got to choose which it is. If it's peace, there is a whole set of behaviors that are completely different than victory. It is not taking the bait. It is not, oh, what exactly did you mean by that, mom? It's not that. It's also not having her over every Sunday for dinner. Like you might think that that's, oh, I'm being peaceful. I'm inviting her over, but not if it's going to skew to a place where you're at each other's throats and you got to go for victory. That, that actually doesn't lead to a peaceful place. You need to choose the battle in the real time. No, I don't think we should have dinner every Sunday. Let's do it every other week and get that fight out right away. Then have a fight every fucking week. It's boundaries. It's boundaries. And what do we do when we talk about boundaries? Well, we talk about war again. We talk about war maps. That we have to make a map. X behavior produces Y consequence. Not sometimes, not when we feel like it. 100 times out of 100. That's how you train a dog. That's how you train a child. And that's how you train another country not to point nukes in your motherfucking direction or take people hostage. Okay? And I gotta say it works. Consistency works. It might not work the first time. It might not work the second time. You might have to keep doing this. And that's what feels so fucked up. It's like, wait a minute. I went through this headache of putting up a boundary and saying, no, you're actually not gonna speak to me. I'm, I'm actually gonna leave dinner. No, I'm gonna, I don't need to take leftovers. Come on, honey, get the kids. We're actually gonna go. You might have to do that two, three, five, 11 times, but you won't have to do it forever. And if you don't put up a boundary, you will. 
You will feel those feelings. You will have that irritation for fucking ever because you're not putting up boundaries. And then you know what you become? A victim. So look, this doctor is not wrong. Therapy truly is going to be your best friend. And this isn't a cop out. And I know it's not fair. It's not fair that you need to have therapy. Have you heard the quote? Like we go to therapy to deal with people who refuse to go to therapy. I know, I know it's not fair, but look, life isn't fucking fair. You know that you're already living in the reality where things are not fair. Only you're just feeling that with no forward motion, no help on the way. You might as well feel that in a therapist's office and be like, you know what? It's the same amount of unfair, but at least now I'm getting some tools to deal with this and to like make myself feel better. Cause right now you're grieving in this spiral. You're sad in a loop. There, it, there's no forward motion and you could let yourself get bitter and you are justified. You have every right to be bitter. You do. But what is the prize for that? Look at your mom. <laughs> What's the prize there? No one likes her. She's alienated. Her life is a fucking mess. Guess what? It starts somewhere and it always starts with the victim narrative. You have the chance to break that. And I know it's not fair. You should be able to wallow. Well, girl, you can. And I'm not saying that you need to move forward through your life being like, it's fine. I don't care. I don't even care. Of course you care. And you have the right to grieve this because it is so unfair. And why the fuck did you not get a wonderful mother? But I promise you, it isn't you. I, I swear to God, if it was, yo, I tell you a lot when it's you. <laughs> I tell you guys for real. I keep it real. I'm like, it's a you thing. It's not. There's no, there's no amazing kid who could change a narcissistic mother. Look at Jeanette McCurdy. Look at, she was like 15, 18 and like crushing it and supporting her whole family. And the mother's like, I'm so disappointed in you. Are you Debbie? Are you? That's interesting. I've seen you, you have cankles. Maybe I'm disappointed in that. So look. You were dealt a shitty hand. I was dealt a shitty hand about my dad. I was, in fact, by all the men in my family. I was. I didn't deserve that. And I have to be cognizant all the time, all the time, with every decision I make, with every guy I date, with everything I say to myself in the mirror, that I am not coming from that place, that I am not living that label of, first of all, either you're a victim and life has wronged you and you get to be an asshole to everybody else, or you actually deserve that. You are unlovable. Your dad didn't even like you. You think some guy you meet on Tinder is gonna like you? Good luck. I don't need luck. I don't need luck. I need strength. And I've got plenty. It's a muscle I learned to flex a long time ago. The my victim story is my champion story. It's not why I've failed in the world. It's actually why I've succeeded. It's why I've stood up to people who said, I don't think you can do it. You're the child of a single mom. And why I have turned into an absolute eagle of a human being. And it's why you can too. Because you simply decide, am I going to get bitter or am I going to get better? Am I going to use this to learn to put up boundaries? I mean, my mother is incredible at putting up boundaries. She is like, she is, un she is, woo, don't cross my mama. But she learned because of my mother. And she's an awesome mom to me because of her mother. Sorry, not because of my mother, her mother. You get what I'm saying. She turned what could have made her the worst parent. You, you have no idea how lucky you have it. My mom did this to me. She didn't do that. She flipped it. She broke those chains. She broke that cycle. And she said, I could act like this. I could use this as a reason to just collapse inside of myself and be a dick. I'm better than that. And it doesn't matter if my mom didn't see that. I see it. God sees it. And my daughter's going to see it too. So that is what I want you to move through the future with. Not the things you didn't have. Because I know, baby girl, I know. I know. I know. It's not fair. But setbacks can turn into setups if you choose for them to. It takes more effort, but it yields more results. I want to know what you guys have to say about Brittany. Like I said, if you have a few bucks to spare to help our shalligator Jerry Beth, it would really mean the world to me to pay the advice forward and really to be such a miracle in the life of someone who 
I mean, every dollar makes such a difference. You know, it really, really does. So we're really going to help her hit her goal. And if your goal is to get great at blowjobs, you can hit that goal <laughs> by joining the Shalantourage. The link is down in the bio. You're going to have access to all my sexy sessions, plus exclusive videos, chit chats with me. I'm about to film a story time for the Shalantourage about what's going on in my dating life. A guy who ghosts, not ghosted, but dipped out of a date by playing a suicide card you, bro you are gonna you're gonna love this go ahead and click that button i'll see you later shalligators <laughs>